Hello and good morning, folks. Welcome back to Almas Market Mornings, your daily dose of global financial updates with me, Shikhar Garg. It's the day we say TGIF. Thank God it's Friday, but more so today, it's the festive moods that's taking the center stage. Before we dive right into the celebrations, it's the last day for markets of this week, and we have some interesting updates for you. The inflation animal, as we've been talking about, is out roaming without a leash. Poaching in the eurozone now, with the Eurostat releasing highest year-on-year -year inflation since the inception of eurozone. RBI on our domestic front are also looking keen to act with rate hikes, but were seen assuring inflation in a band of manageable area. So, uh, JK, I'd like to uh, hear from you exactly how and what should uh, people be expecting in the financial markets now. Yeah. Good morning. Uh so i think uh, a lot of focus uh, i am seeing on the currencies uh, in the last uh, two sessions uh, the us dollar performance which has been uh, very strong uh, has rallied almost against all currencies and uh, this was uh, uh, you know this was seen in just two sessions uh, while it took almost a month to you know uh, correct itself like euro from 99.5 to 1.0350 took about a you know little less than a month and in just three say three four days it has come off and uh, it's really the restart of the dollar's bull trend that is how i'm seeing it and uh, uh, this has been kindled initially by the chinese uh, data that came early this week when uh, all the segments of the economy were very weak China came and cut the rate and uh, triggered a fall in yuan, which has now seen almost 6.83 and uh, uh, now close to losing 10% from its uh, best levels of 6.25, which was seen earlier in this cycle. And uh, Eurozone, so every country has its own issues, while, uh, uh, you know, US uh, stands uh, tall among all of them. That's the reason why investors are favoring the safety and the and the investment of the dollar, uh, investment into dollars, uh, yields are not so bad at 2.7, 2.8. And uh, uh, in fact, a uh, short term tenor like two year is giving 3.22. Uh, and uh, more than all uh, uh, the other currencies, look at it. Uh, we had rate raise from Australia early this month. And since then, Australian dollar has lost more than 3%. New Zealand raised their doll, uh, the rate uh, day for yesterday, and the, the, the currency has lost nearly 2%. And that has, has been the case even with UK, which raised by 0.5% uh, late last month, and uh, their currency is now down below 1.19 almost, uh, like enough you know, from the peak of 1.2270 or something, like almost 3%. So it's really uh, uh, the confidence that the uh, investors have in the US in managing not only the inflation, but also to see that there is no severe slowdown or you know even to add, address the slowdown if, it, if and when it occurs. The signs of slowdowns are very mixed right now. Uh, we had uh, the New York uh, Fed manufacturing survey two days back that was very weak. Uh, in fact, uh, one of the weakest numbers. But then yesterday we had the Philly Fed survey, which uh, showed a strong number. And even the jobless claims for the week uh, ended the 13th August uh, showed a drop in the claims uh, versus a rise in the claim for the previous uh, three weeks. So it's not that, you know, US economy is uh, slowing down so much. At the same time, inflation uh, has shown some sense of weakening, but in absolute or nominal terms, the inflation is still very high, above 8%. So Fed will continue to hike rates uh, definitely at least 0.5% this coming September meeting and then maybe one more 0.5 in November. Fed officials have not stopped, uh, you know, reaching for more rate hikes. They are very keen uh, that, you know, the Fed should continue with its fight against the inflation. Uh, at the same time, uh, if there are signs that the economy is, uh, you know, severely slowing down, they will, you know, uh, slow down the pace of the rate hikes. So it's a question of, uh, uh, you know, how the investors have the confidence about the economies. Uh, so Chinese, uh, as I said, Chinese economy is really in doldrums and Eurozone 
uh, the big question mark about the way they can manage their energy security in the coming winter, particularly if it is going to be severe. UK has 10.1% double digit inflation, uh, whereas the economy is really not that strong. Uh, Japan is still having one of the lowest yields and uh, Japanese and uh, at any uh, smallest sign of uh, a dollar strength uh, in weekends by at least 1%. So that's how, so I'm saying currencies have taken the center stage right now. Uh, the equities are uh, somewhat in a sideways range right now after a big rise uh, since middle of June, uh, probably waiting for more triggers. We might see some profit taking on the recent uh, big rise. Yields are also not moving that much uh, <clears throat> because they need to see how the upcoming inflation numbers will look like and what Fed will do with respect to that. Uh, so uh, the focus is on definitely on currencies. Uh, so even in fact, Asian currencies are also weakened. Uh, I think Korean won is at uh, almost a 13 year low and uh, rupee is not uh, uh, spared also, although the movement in the rupee is restricted on both sides uh, because of uh, RBI. And uh, yesterday's uh, price action clearly indicated that market, whole market was buying and the uh, central bank was selling to curb further weakness. We might as well see the same thing, but slightly at a higher level near about 70, 79, 80 or so. Uh, it's unlikely that it will be breached in a hurry unless uh, we see a sustained fall below parity in the euro or the dollar index rises above 109. So really I'm looking how the dollar fares. Yes. Uh, one thing that I can say that central banks may not be happy with their currencies weakening so much because that compounds their problem on inflation. Uh, every currency just adds to the imported inflation. So whether they come and talk their currencies up or whether they're going to indicate any action in the market, it's too early to say, but definitely currencies will be on their radar as they fall uh, like nine pins. Yeah, that's it as we end the uh, week. Uh, Thank you, Shikhar. Okay, wonderful, JK. Thank you so much. And uh, it's been uh, quite an interesting week, folks. And uh, like uh, JK mentioned, the dollar has rallied against almost all currencies. Uh, but uh, the yields have a different play altogether with uh, the Bank of Japan having the lowest yields yet. Though interestingly, as JK mentioned, the central banks may not like this kind of move in currencies on the weakening side because uh, the inflation, imported inflation may be another sign of worry for them. So let's see how central banks are reacting to these kind of actions. But at the same time, what you're seeing is, and uh, as Jacob mentioned, the signs of slowdown are quite bright, but it doesn't look like when you see equity markets, they've been quite jubilant in the past few days. And it needs to be seen, how does equity markets take up these kind of uh, updates on the macro front? That's it for today. Meanwhile, uh, that's it for today, guys. Uh, and uh, it's the festive uh, mood on, as we have mentioned earlier. So happy Janmashtami to all of you. And we'll come back again on Monday with another round of fresh updates just brewed for you. That's it. Thank you so much for joining.